What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm finally bringing you another episode of my best Warzone loadout series. So today we're going to be going over more balanced weapons. So these are essentially combinations of a, uh, basically an AR or an automatic or uh, some sort of main weapon with an SMG. And then basically the, the point of these videos is to give you the best possible loadouts for essentially any range. They're not like super aggressive loadouts. They're not super passive loadouts. It's just going to be something where you're effective everywhere. You can take every fight pretty much. Um, obviously you don't have a sniper, so you're, you're not really going to want to take sniper battles with, with these loadouts, but um, they're supposed to be just, just well-balanced, well-rounded loadouts. So uh, before we jump into the loadouts, this is another sponsored video. So we have a little sponsor segment real quick, and then we will jump into my favorite loadouts. Our sponsor for today's video is Z-League. Z-League is the world's first skill-based Warzone tournament platform. Z-League doesn't use KD caps for their tournaments. What they did is they brought in a former Google engineer, and he built an algorithm that uses all your Warzone stats to place your team into a division that matches your skill level. So whether you're a 5 KD or a .5, it doesn't matter. The teams you're competing against will all be of similar skill. They've had teams with average KDs as low as .7 win $1,000 in the past. So scoring for their tournaments is based on kills with additional points for placement. So it's a kill race with extra points for how you place in the, in the match. And they'll actively track your match performance in real time on their website. So while you're playing, you can actually check to see where you stand in the tournament. It also doesn't matter if you're on console or PC, all platforms are allowed to play. Okay, so here on their website, you can see that they have multiple types of tournaments. They have some that are paid, some that are free, solos, duos, trios, quads. Pretty much something for everybody here. So some of the paid tournaments have prizes up to a thousand dollars. If you're interested in playing in tournaments, it's a really cool website, cool tournament platform. Uh, be sure to check them out in the video description below. All right. So just to reiterate, I haven't made one of these videos in a long time, so I just want to clarify. Um, really, just talking about the guns here. Uh, I, w I can talk about perks a little bit, but in general, we're just focusing on gun builds for these videos. So. The first loadout I want to go over is the AUG. Everybody knows this already, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But the AUG is absolutely one of the best guns in the game right now. I think uh, I'm one of the weird ones that still likes the M16, but I think most people actually prefer this AUG build. Uh, so this is probably the recommended build. Um, you could swap out the 54-round drum for a 45-round drum for faster ADS. Uh, that's definitely an option. I personally like having a 54-round drum, I think. Uh, just having those extra nine shots can come in handy. That's three full bursts, which is enough to down somebody even without a headshot. So it can come in handy. Uh, but if you're going to play a little more aggressive, you might want to swap to the 45 round drum just so you have better, uh, better ADS times. But everybody knows this. This gun's insane right now. M16 and AUG, in my opinion, are head and shoulders above everything else. There's nothing else that really comes close right now. Um, so yeah, that's, that is the, Standard meta AUG build there. I just wanted to mention it because it is a fantastic gun. Uh, and then to pair it, uh, this is a build that I've been using recently for the FFAR. Um, because the AUG doesn't use quite as much ammo, which is why you can get away with using a 45 round mag, uh, you can get away with running an FFAR as your secondary. And everybody also knows this, but the FFAR has insane TTK. Uh, but my build is a little bit different than most people's, so I want to talk about this for a second. Um, I've been using this the last couple times I've played and streamed, and this is just a disgustingly good FFAR. So uh, the logic behind this is I get asked all the time why I'm using suppressor instead of agency suppressor, and it's for ADS times. I'm, I'm, I'm running this as an SMG, and we have nothing that can reduce the ADS times to get it to an SMG uh, level of ADS. So I run the suppressor instead of the agency just because the agency will hurt your ADS time by a decent amount. Um, and in, yeah, this reduces your bullet velocity, reduces your damage range, but you're running this thing as an SMG. You're not trying to build it as an AR. So it doesn't matter that your range is reduced by, you know, 15% or whatever this does, because even with that, the range on the FFAR is still going to be way longer than every other SMG in the game. So it's not super important that you maintain that. I think it's 36 meters is its default drop off. You don't need to maintain that because you're not you're running it as an SMG. So the longest SMG in the game, I think, is like the Mac 10 at like 23 meters or something with the cavalry lancer and the, the agency suppressor, the rifled barrel and the agency suppressor. And even with this suppressor on the FFAR, you're gonna have quite a bit more range than a Mac 10. 
at that first drop off and it still kills faster past that first drop off so it's, it, when you're running it as an smg i don't think you need to use agency suppressor and that's my my logic there um i've tried all these different grips to me this is just this is just how i feel about it, it, it you can have your own opinion uh, opinion on this i know a lot of people run the SVOD speed grip but the field agent to me feels much much better it feels much more accurate uh makes this gun feel super accurate to me much less bouncy than the SVOD. again that's just personal preference. So if you like this grip, it can help your you're sprinting almost all the time in this game. So sprinting movement speed is uh, probably more important than just regular movement speed, in my opinion, because you're almost always going to be sprinting. So I do think the speed grip is a good option. But me personally, I like the field agent. Field agent is my uh, my choice, definitely. Level 50 round fast mag still doesn't hurt your ADS times like it says it does. So still 100% the choice. Um. Also, no barrel. Same same reason as what I just mentioned. I don't use a barrel because I don't think you need to extend that damage range, and I love having an optic on the FFAR. I know a lot of people like the irons, and I like the irons too, but I just feel like I hit more shots with the with an optic, and the mill stop has become my favorite. I use this on both my sniper build, my sniper complement build, and my SMG build here. Uh, it's just my favorite uh, optic for this thing. And I, I basically just swap a barrel for that. And same reason as the suppressor. I don't think you need that damage range, really, with a SMG build. And then Raider Stock, I think. Uh, I swapped between CQB pad and Raider Stock, but right now I'm on Raider again. As always, this thing's ridiculous up close. That uh, firing movement speed, when you pull a trigger, you just take off and move like ridiculously fast. Uh, but the big thing is the sprint to fire time. So the reason I swap between CQB and Raiders is because they both help with sprint to fire. And since you're running this FFAR as an SMG, and assault rifles have much more sprint to fire time than uh, SMGs do by default, you have to have something that dramatically reduces your uh, sprint to fire time. So that's the uh, the job of the Raider stock and the CQB pad uh, is to get that sprint to fire time down so you can at least compete with the SMGs. And we'll look at the charts here in a second so you can see how uh, how important that Raider stock is. But uh, yeah, the, I think the Raider stock, when you're running it as an SMG, the Raider stock is just, it's just ridiculously good. This gun is, is, in my opinion, far and above better than every other SMG in the game right now. And, I mean, I think you guys probably all agree. You see this gun everywhere in Warzone right now. But uh, my build's a little, little bit unique, so I wanted to take a bunch of time here to explain it. I think if you try this, you're going to love it. So, all right, I'm not actually going to take the time to talk about the AUG stats here very much. Basically, the AUG is really good because uh, it has consistent TTK all the way out, and it's just really, really accurate. Uh, so that's what's making it so good right now is the, the two-burst potential with one headshot, and it just has that same TTK all the way out because it's a burst gun, and they removed those damage drop-offs on burst guns just to make them a little more viable. Uh, but I have a whole video on that, so if you want to see my thoughts on like the AUG versus the M16, I'll link that video below. Uh, you can go check that out. Um, but I'm not going to take too much time to talk about it, like I said, just because I've covered it before. So we're going to focus on that SMG FFAR build and talk about why I think that build is so good right now and why it's my favorite build. So what I've done here is I've built the FFAR that I talked about, which is Suppressor, Field Agent Grip, Mill Stop Reflex, 50 Round Fast Mag, and Raider Stock. And then this is against a MAC-10 with Agency Suppressor, Raider Stock, and Cavalry Barrel, which is my recommended uh, combination of attachments on the Mac 10. We'll talk about that in a second. That'll be in the next uh, the next loadout we talk about, or the one after that. I'm covering three loadouts in this video, so we will talk about this new Mac 10 build once we get there. But uh, starting off to compare it to the FFAR with the AUG. Um, so even with the suppressor that reduces your damage range and no barrel, you still get an extra 10 meters of range over the longest or close to the longest Mac 10 build. I haven't looked into the lasers yet. Um, but I'm but for this build I wouldn't even use a laser. So uh, comparing these two, you get much better TTK with the FFAR, like significantly better, 467 milliseconds versus 538. So you know, like 80 milliseconds better, and then an extra 10 meters of range. It's crazy. Um, now if you if you include sprint to fire time, this is why I included Raider stock on both of these to help with sprint to fire because I think sprint to fire is super important. Like I talked about, extremely important on the AR because it uh, ARs just naturally have a lot worse sprint to fire time, and that's how they balance the ARs with SMGs up close. One of the one of the things they do to balance it. 
as well as ADS times. So since we're trying to get this FFAR to be more like an SMG, we use regular suppressor because that helps with ADS times. We use Raider Stock because that helps with uh, strafing movement speed, shooting movement speed, and uh, the ever important sprint to fire time. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off or include sprint to fire time and then compare these. So chest shots, if you include sprint to fire time, because the MAC-10 has much, much better sprint to fire times, uh, the TTKs are going to get very, very close here. So they're almost the same out to 20 meters. But then still you get that extra 10 meters after that with the FFAR if you need it. Then if we go to stomach, the MAC-10 will actually win stomach shots. Uh, with sprint to fire time included. And then if you go to extremities, the FFAR is going to take over again. So it's just, it, in situations where sprint to fire time is important, you're going to really, really regret it if you don't have either the Raider stock or the CQB pad. And for me, I used the CQB pad for a long time. They both have the same effect on sprint to fire. We can go look at that actually while I'm talking about it. Go edit the FFAR. So the Raider stock, you can see over here on the right, Helps 84 milliseconds to sprint to fire, and so does the CQB pad. So the Raider stock hurts your hip fire more, but also gives you those insane movement speed uh, benefits, shooting movement speed. That's something I'm going to add to the site very soon: is shooting movement speed, sprinting movement speed. Since those are new stats, we didn't have them. We didn't have them on the website from uh, before Cold War integration, uh, but they're going to be coming very soon. But so the the logic I used CQB pad a lot instead of Raider, and the logic for me was just that. Raider actually would like throw me off like there seems to be a lot more aimed walking movement sway when you're using the Raider and I think that's just because the animation is sped up because you're moving so fast so it makes me miss some shots sometimes at longer ranges and just out of comfort I use the CQB pad but for this build specifically since you're using it as an SMG you're supposed to be inside you know 20-25 meters when you're using this gun uh, I think definitely Raider stock's the way to go you'll win a lot of fights because of the Raider stock so it's up to you. If you feel like you're missing a bunch of shots because of the Raider, then use the CQB. Uh, but otherwise, definitely stick with the Raider. All right, next up is the Modern Warfare M4. This is something that I think is majorly slept on right now. Keep in mind, I do think the M16 and the AUG are, like I said at the beginning of the video, head and shoulders above everything else. But if they ever catch a nerf in the near future, I think the M4 is going to be an absolutely top tier pick. So. The M4 is pretty much uh, jack of all trades, master of none. It's really, really good everywhere, but it's not the best anywhere. To me, it feels super, super accurate, and we'll we'll show some stats for this in a minute. But it feels to me as accurate as like an M4 or as a as a Grau or an M13. Uh, and you'll see on the TTK charts that it's going to win those fights if it's as accurate. So for me personally, I love this gun. I have had some crazy games with it. Uh, and speaking of crazy games. I have uh, created a second channel for more gameplay-focused content. It's called True Game Data Plays. Uh, that is going to be linked below and should be on the screen right now. So if you're interested in gameplay, I have a 20-kill game with the M4 uploaded on that channel right now. It is a really fun game with a couple of my friends. So if you're interested in that, I'm probably going to be posting pretty frequently on there because I've had some awesome games pretty, pretty recently. I played with J-God, Ace, and Drifter the other day. We got a win, so that'll be going up on there. I played with Razor, Jakey Chu, and j -Rick, and we had a couple wins that were uh, super fun, super aggro games. Um, we should have some pretty good gameplay up on there pretty soon. So if you're interested, you want to follow, want to sub, uh, the link will be below. So go check that channel out. And uh, if you want more gameplay-focused content on the build, so basically I'll use it to showcase builds like this. So I'm going to talk about this M4 and why it's good, and then I'll have a video uploaded on my uh, True Game Data Plays channel where I use it and do well with it. And you can see how it works in action. So, yeah, if you want to check it out, uh, the link will be down below. But, yeah, to me, the M4 is just, it's just a beamer. It's just, it's super, super accurate. And you'll see if you go watch that video on my other channel, there's times where I'll fry people at 100, 120 meters with this thing, like, barely missing a bullet. Uh, I think, I don't know why, but it just feels super, super accurate to me. And I've talked about the M4 before. Uh, if you get used to the Ram 7, the Ram 7 is going to beat it if you can control the recoil, but to me, the M4 just feels so much more accurate. And it could just be that I'm not used to the RAM, because they kind of have the same recoil pattern. The, the M4 just goes up into the right, and the RAM just goes up into the left. But the M4, you get a little bit more straight vertical recoil before it trails off to the right, so that might be part of it. I don't know, but the M4 feels like an absolute beam to me, and I had a blast using it. I believe in the video on my second channel, 
Um, I was using a Cold War MP5. I think the Cold War MP5 is, is underused right now. Um, so we're going to go over this build for it. This is not what I was using in the video. I was just experimenting with stuff in the video, but uh, I will talk about what I was using uh, on the other channel uh, at the intro to that video. So if you are interested in that, you can check that out. Um, but we have uh, Agency Suppressor, Cavalry Lancer, 5 milliwatt Laser, Bruiser Grip, and the 50-round Drum Mag. So logic behind this, Agency Suppressor obviously increases that uh, bullet velocity damage range, which is important on an SMG. Uh, the reason it's not important on the FFR, FFAR, again, is because it has so much more damage range, but SMGs have very short damage range, so you want to extend that if you can, and they have good ADS times already, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Uh, Cavalry Lancer, just for increased damage range. This is the second most increasing damage range attachment. The rifled increases it a little bit more, but you'll see the rifled hurts your sprinting movement speed, so I wouldn't recommend that for an SMG, because... Uh, you know, movement speed and sprint speed and all that's really, really important with an SMG. So I think Cavalry Lancer is going to be the pick for the Cold War SMGs currently. And then uh, 5 milliwatt for hip fire. This is a hip fire build. Uh, the Cold War MP5, if you've used it, has a ton of vertical recoil for the first, I don't know, 10 or 15 shots. So the best way to use it, in my opinion, is like a hip fire build. Just because when you're hip firing, you don't have to worry about that uh, recoil very much. So with this build, you're going to get the 5 milliwatt, and then the bruiser grip now helps with hip fire and movement speed. So this is going to up that mobility and help you with the hip fire. And then 50 round drum instead of the 50 round fast mag just for ADS time reasons. Um, we're trying to keep the ADS reasonable, and we already have the agency. We already have the 5 milliwatt, which both hurt ADS by quite a bit. Um, so we don't want the 50 round fast mag. And really the reload time is not that significantly different with these two, so... I think definitely the 50 round drum is the way to go currently. Uh, but this build, even without the Raider stock to help with sprint to fire, and without the no stock to help to help with sprint to fire, it still has better sprint to fire times than that FFAR. So if you run into an FFAR up close with the Cold War MP5, you're going to beat it. Just because you're going to both be sprinting, and the Cold War MP5 is, gonna, is just going to be able to shoot faster and, and kill faster. So... Um, I do think it's hard to get away with this build right now just because so many people are running the FFAR and the, the range and accuracy of the FFAR uh, is significantly better than the Cold War MP5. So it's a trade-off. I mean, if you're rushing buildings being super aggro when you get up close, then this might be a better option than the FFAR. But the FFAR is just so well-rounded right now with that build that I showed uh, as an SMG. So it's hard hard to get away from that. But I wanted to show this, especially if the FFAR catches a nerf sometime soon, which... It should. It's it's way too good. Um, this would be a very, very fun build to run in the future if uh, if the FFAR catches a nerf. So I just wanted to talk about it some. All right, so first I'm going to compare the M4 to the Kilo, just because the Kilo is a gun that I think a lot of people are still using, actually, even after the nerf. And it makes sense. I mean, it's still really good inside, like, 86 meters, uh, 87 meters. It's really accurate in here, so it's it's going to have a really good effect of TTK because you're hitting all your shots. Uh, outside that damage range, though, it just feels like you're shooting marshmallows. And that's where something like the M4 can come in and take over, where it doesn't have that last damage drop-off. So it still feels pretty powerful out here, uh, past 80 meters. And like I said, I have pretty regularly was beaming people at 100-plus meters with the M4. It just feels really accurate to me. Um, I think on console, it'll be a little harder to control. But uh, on PC, at least, I I was loving using the M4. But anyway... Up close, the M4 is going to beat the Kilo just because it shoots faster. They have similar damage range, but the M4 shoots a little bit faster than the Kilo. They have the exact same damage profile. Uh, one of the things that's really nice about the M4, the Kilo, the Growl, uh, the Ram 7, these guns all have the exact same damage profile on chest, stomach, and legs and extremities. So it doesn't matter where you hit the target, it's going to be super consistent. It's always going to do the same amount of damage. Uh, unlike things like the Amax, which only have that amazing TTK when you hit chest shots, uh, FFAR has the TTK when you hit, like, I think it's like four chest shots, and then four body shots is still a kill, so you can miss, like, four chest shots. Um, but still, the the fact that these are all really consistent uh, really is actually really nice. It just makes the gun feel very, very consistent in all situations. Um, but yeah, in the middle range, it's about the same as the Kilo. And then, like I said, out past that 87 meters, it's going to be way, way faster than the Kilo, and it feels really accurate, so I think the effective TTK out here is still going to be better than the Kilo's. All right, so I added the uh, M16 to this just for comparison's sake. So this kind of shows where accuracy is just absolutely king. The M16 feels way better than the M4 to me. Like I mentioned earlier, it's the M4 is great. I think it's actually a top-tier weapon right now. It's just that the M16 and the AUG are just 
head and shoulders above everything else right now, in my opinion. So even though the M16's TTK from 46 meters, 44 meters and on is about the same as the Modern Warfare M4, I'm going to win that fight every day of the week with the M16 just because I don't miss. You get that 3x optic on there. You can see your target a lot better. Uh, you just you don't miss with the M16. So this just shows how important accuracy is. I, I do significantly better with the M16 than any other gun in the game, but the TTKs aren't great. So just keep that in mind. Accuracy is always going to be king. So at range, if you're hitting your shots, that's the most important thing. All right, I want to talk really quickly about that uh, Cold War MP5 versus the FFAR SMG build that I've talked about so much at the beginning of the video. So you'll see that the pink is the Cold War MP5 and orange is the SMG FFAR. So obviously FFAR, like I said, way, way more damage range. Slightly better TTK on chest shots. Um, if we swap to stomach, the Cold War MP5 is going to take over. If we swap to extremities, the FFAR is going to take over again and be faster. Um, but... Like I said, if you include sprint to fire time, all of a sudden that's going to swap. So the cold run P5 is going to take over in that first 12 meter range. And then stomach shots, it's going to be even more dramatically faster. So it's significantly faster there, like 100 milliseconds faster than the FFAR. And then it'll also win on chest shots just because of that. So in situations where you're rushing buildings and you're right up in people's faces, uh, the cold run P5 is hard to beat. And it, this hip fire build is, is pretty nasty. Again, Hard to use right now because of the FFAR, because of this gap right here. The gap from 12 meters up to 30 meters where the FFAR is just going to absolutely fry you, both because it's more accurate and it has better TTK. So, tough to use. In the future, if the FFAR catches a nerf, I think you're going to see a lot more of these Cold War MP5s. Alright, and last up for today's video is going to be the Growl and the Mac 10 So, Growl build's a little bit different than some people's, so you'll see a lot of... You'll see a lot of Archangel Barrel and Attack Laser. This was the meta um, season, season. It was really the meta season one and season two, uh, but people didn't know about it in season one. So uh, I was one of the cool kids that was using it. But currently, I think with the current meta, this build is going to be a little bit better with the Nexus Barrel and the VLK. So you get a little more zoom. A little bit less damage range, a little bit less bullet velocity than the Archangel Barrel. Not a, not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, and you get the reason I like the Nexus over the Archangel is the reason the Archangel is so good is because of those iron sights. You get the, when you get the iron sights, you can get that tack laser on there. Uh, but the issue is in the current meta with AUGs and M16s having that 3x uh, axial arms optic, you need a little bit more zoom because people are going to be engaging you at much further distances. So if you're playing on affected ADS. At a high FOV, this is a obviously for PC players I'm talking about right now. Um, your iron sights are going to have like no zoom because you're unaffected, you're on a high FOV, you're going to get very, very little zoom with iron sights. So I think it's important uh, to at least use a VLK. Um, if you want even more zoom, you could go with uh, the Scout Combat. That would be another pretty good option. Uh, but to be able, be able to engage these guys with AUGs and M16s, you need a little bit more zoom currently in, in the current meta. So this build, we'll look at the stats. I'll show you why I like the Nexus Barrel over the Archangel. But uh, this is actually a pretty nasty build. Super, super accurate. Decent TTKs. Um, I think it's still a good gun. It's it. Same thing I said for the M4. Hard to use right now because the M16 and the AUG are so overpoweringly good. But in the future, hopefully when the AUG and the M16 catch a little bit of a nerf, uh, this gun is going to be... Very, very viable for movement speed reasons, ADS movement speed, TTKs, and accuracy. All those things combined, I think the, the Growl is going to be a great pick. All right, and then the MAC-10, um, similar story to the Cold War MP5 that I talked about earlier, but we use agency to increase that damage range because it's an SMG and its damage range is a lot shorter than the AR, so we need to extend it. Um, the Cavalry Lancer, again, to extend damage range. And the reason we don't choose Rifled, even though Rifled gives a little bit more bonus to damage range, is because of that sprinting movement speed. Uh, it's very important to have high mobility with an SMG, so I would try to avoid reducing your mobility in any way, if you can. So you don't have to put that rifle on there. You can use cavalry, slightly less damage range, but better movement speed. Um, Raider stock, I just I, I see a lot of people using the, the combat stock, SAS combat stock. And I personally think the Raider stock is quite a bit better. You still get really, really good ADS moving, movement speed. 
and blocking movement speed. They both help with that. Uh, but with the Raider, you also get that sprint to fire, which I've been obsessing over in this video, but it's just so important. There's situations where you're sprinting and you see somebody and he's not sprinting. And the only chance you have is if you have something that's helping your sprint to fire time because you just can't, you simply can't pull the trigger as fast as they can. So you need something that helps get that number, number down. Um, but yeah, I recommend Raider over combat. Um, you might get slightly better aimed walking movement speed with the combat, but I just think the sprint to fire is worth it to go with the Raider. It does super penalize your hip fire though, so you're really not going to want to hip fire this build. Uh, but with the MAC-10 and with this crazy aimed walking movement speed, you shouldn't really need to hip fire very often, only like if they're up in your face completely. Uh, for the underbarrel, I use the striker or the patrol. Again, for mobility reasons, I think the MAC-10 is accurate enough that you don't really need the field agent. And like I said, you don't want to slow down your, your movement speed at all with, a, with an SMG, if you can avoid it. Um, I have used the field agent a bunch, but at that point, when you're trying to make this gun super accurate, I don't know why you wouldn't really just use an FFAR, unless you're trying to conserve ammo, I guess, because you have another AR in your main slot. Um, but overall, I think patrol or striker is the better option just for movement speed. So patrol will give you the best sprinting movement speed. Striker gives you the best regular movement speed, which also helps sprinting movement speed. Um, but not quite as much. So you'll move a little bit faster when sprinting with the patrol, but you'll move a little bit faster when not sprinting with the striker. Uh, striker also helps hip fire a little bit, but I think, uh, I don't know. I'm torn between these two. Probably patrol would make a little more sense because most of the time you're going to be sprinting. Uh, but striker's a good option too. I think they're both good. And then 53 round drum again, because this 53 round fast mag really hurts your ADS times. And it kind of flip-flops. In some cases, the drum is is worse than the fast mag, like the FFAR. Uh, and in some cases, it's better. But for the MAC-10, it is it is much better for ADS times to use the, the drum mag. All right, so real quickly, I want to explain the Nexus Barrel over the Archangel for this build. So Archangel gives you the biggest range modifier, 40% increase, but Nexus is close behind at 35%. Um, Archangel also gives you the best bullet velocity at 57% increase, but Nexus is also very close at 52%. Uh, but the ADS time difference is pretty dramatic, so the Archangel is very penalizing in ADS, 71 milliseconds, uh, which is a significant amount on an already slower build. And then the Nexus is only 33 milliseconds, so the Nexus keeps the gun very snappy, very quick. Uh, it's going to be pretty good up close. Uh, and because you have that VLK optic, you're going to be much more accurate at range, so... I'll build this out real fast with the standard build I was just talking about. Commando, 60 round mag, and then VLK. And then I will add the other standard Grau. So we're going to add Grau again with the old build that people would use, which was TAC Laser, Commando, 60 round mag. So Archangel, TAC Laser, 60 round mag, Commando, Monolithic. That's the other build that people would use a lot. So if we check this out and look at the base stats, you're going to see that the... The Grau with the Nexus Barrel on the left has slightly worse ADS times, like 10 milliseconds, but totally worth it for today's meta where you need a little bit extra range. Uh, the Archangel just does not give you anywhere near enough zoom because it's iron sights. So with that VLK or the Scout Combat, if you want even more zoom, uh, it, you can see your target way better and hit your shots at range way better. So overall, you get a little bit better movement speed too, a little bit better ADS movement speed. Recoil is almost exactly the same. Um, I think that uh, it's definitely definitely the right call to go with uh, the Nexus Barrel in the current meta. That's just it's an underused build, and it always has been. Even back in the ground meta, it was an underused build. Um, but but right now, I think you really need that extra range. So I just wanted to show the build because I think it's a good gun, and if the M16 and the AUG catch a nerf, like I said, it's going to be uh, super super good. All right, let's do a really quick uh, TTK comparison with the M4 that I was just talking about. Before we jump into that, though, you can see here the ADS time, 309 milliseconds with the Nexus Barrel versus the M4's 452 milliseconds. So the M4 is dramatically slower to ADS, uh, which can make a big difference in some fights. Uh, but if you look at TTKs, so this is 250 health chest shots. Um, both Grows are obviously going to be on top of each other, one with slightly more range than the other. Uh, but the M4 is going to beat them by about 50, 60 milliseconds in the first damage range, and then by about 70 milliseconds in the second damage range. So they are slower than the M4, but I would also say it's a little bit more accurate than the M4. So at range, that's going to make up for that a little bit. Uh, and then if you actually include ADS time, which 
not always important, but in certain situations, it's very important. Uh, if you can include ADS time, then all of a sudden the Nexus Barrel and the the Tac Laser Archangel uh, take over in terms of TTK because you have the ADS before you can shoot if somebody's at range. So I think the Growl is actually still really good, especially with this Nexus Barrel build that is very underused right now. Um, I'm surprised we don't see it more, uh, especially once the M16 and AUG get nerfed a little bit. You're going to be seeing a lot more of these Growls. So I wanted to show this ahead of time so you you know what's coming. If... Uh, you can use it now too. I mean, it's still good right now. It's just going to be a little tough to use because the M16 and the AUG are so, so good. All right, guys, I think that does it for today. So again, if you're interested in my gameplay, I've been playing really well recently, actually. Like I went back and calculated my KD for the last like month or two. And it was like 3.75 with like 25% win percentage. I've been playing ridiculously well. So I actually have some, some really cool gameplays coming in on the gameplay channel. So if you want to check that out, again, it's linked below. I do have that uh, M4 Cold War MP5 video, 20 bomb. It's going to be going up the same time as this video. So you can check that out over there. But yeah, I um, appreciate all you guys for, for watching the video. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys all in the next one.